now coming to section 140 that talks about removal resignation of the auditor. So, this section says that the auditor appointed under section 139 may be removed from his office before the expiry of his term only by a special resolution of the company after obtaining the previous approval of the central government in that behalf in the prescribed manner. Now, if you analyze this section, uh, you know, as we understood, special resolution in the company's meeting is required and also the approval from the central government. Before above, reasonable opportunity of being heard should be given to the auditor. The auditor should file report in the prescribed manner to ROC and the company, uh, his, his reasons of uh, resignations within 30 days of resignation should be filed with the ROC. Special notice should, uh, shall be uh, required for passing sp uh, resolutions to not to appoint the retiring auditor. Now, let us look at the next section that is section 141 that talks about eligibility qualification of the auditor. Section 141 says that a person shall be eligible for appointment as an auditor of a company only if he is a chartered accountant, provided that the firm where a, a majority of the partners practicing in India are qualified for appointment as aforesaid may be appointed at by its firm name to be auditor of a company. Section 141 further says that where a firm including a limited liability partnership is appointed as an auditor of a company, only the partners who are chartered accountants shall be authorized to act and sign on behalf of the firm. Now, let us look at the analysis of this section. Now, it is good to see that introduction of LLP that is limited liability partnership uh, as auditor and partners not having even the chartered accountant or CA degree even are allowed to work with CAs. This is similar to what has been seen as international practice. Now, there are some terms which have been used in this uh, you know section which are little uh, subject to be better and uh, which are supposed to be uh, understood properly. Uh, the terms like business relationship as given in the act as additional disqualifications requires a good clarity. Similarly, other other uh, there are uh, it is and it is to be understood as to what constitute a business relationship, whether routine business transactions at an arm's length or even immaterial transactions. It is not clear as to whether a person or firm engaged in providing non-audit services is disqualified to be auditor of any company or in that company uh, only to which such services are provided. The act does not say anything as to nature of the size of the companies while restricting the number of number of bodies to 20 companies. Okay, let us look at the next section that is 142. So, that relates to remuneration of the auditor. So, this section explains that the remuneration of the auditor of a company shall be fixed in its general meeting or in such manner as may be determined therein. Uh, provided that the board may fix remunerations of the first auditor appointed by it. Uh, this section also further says that remuneration under sex, uh, under, under uh, uh, remuneration uh, shall in addition to the fee payable to an auditor include the expenses if any incurred by the auditor in connection with the audit of the company and any facility extended to him but does not include any remuneration paid to him for any other services rendered by him at the request of the company. Okay. Now, suppose you start analyzing the section 142. So, uh, it is found that this is a big issue that why remuneration to be decided in the general meeting for all auditors except in the case of first auditor. This is definitely a big question you know ki why the first case I mean when the first auditor is appointed why the board of directors should uh, they, they are they are they are they are they have got they, they can do that but whereas the uh, subsequent uh, you know remuneration should be discussed in the general meeting. Besides the implication of financial issues, naturally the fees can be having an impact on the independent judgment of auditors uh, of, the, of the affairs of the company as there are a lot of practical uh, examples of companies uh, including Satyam, uh, uh, the auditors, the remuneration was very high and uh, even the analysts, they, they, the, the legal pundits, you know, they, they, they say with the increase in the remunerations, the, 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 the biasness of the auditors also comes into picture. Uh, uh, so, so, definitely this is a very crucial uh, decision and the remuneration paid for the audit should be different from payment made to some, uh, some uh, same auditor for other services. These are very relevant issues to be taken care seriously as there is a chance of su such payment having impact on the independent views of the auditor. Okay, next section is the section 143 that deals with power and duties of the auditor. That explains that every auditor of a company shall have a right of access at all times to the books of account and vouchers of the company, whether kept at the registered office of the company or at any other place uh, and shall be entitled to require from the officers of the company such informations and explanations as he may consider necessary for the performance of his duties. Okay. Now, if you look at uh, uh, analyzing this section, uh, one thing is uh, regarding the duty of the auditor to report to the central government for fraud by officers or employees, there is no materiality limits set in the act. 
the act may require an auditor to report even trivial matters making it an in ineffective. On the other hand, the auditor is also considered as gatekeepers of the accounting and internal controls of the company. The act of the auditors in reporting may uh, uh, any fraud or similar matters to look like act of whistleblowers which the companies should consider in their whistleblowing policies. The central government with consultation with the NFRA that is National Financial Reporting Authority shall ensure the auditors report to carry a statement on certain matters as it will prescribe. There appears to be uh, surely some changes going to happen with regard to standards of conducting audit. There are additional responsibilities with regard to commenting on the internal financial control and operational effectiveness. This is as per the international practices, this is most welcome. And uh, coming to the next section that is section 144, it says that an auditor appointed under this act shall provide, shall not provide certain services. The, the services are, uh, which are, which are, uh, which the auditor should not, you know, provide to the company in which he is auditing. The accounting and bookkeeping services, the internal audit, design and implementation of any financial information system, actuarial services, investment and advisory services, investment banking services, rendering of, you know, outsource financial services, management services and any other kind of services which may be prescribed. Now, if you analyze this particular section, section 144, definitely people will talk about uh, this, this point that there are certain non-audit services which might not pose risk to the independence, but the way such services have been listed and defined, it appears that as if almost all the non-audit services are risk, to independent, uh, are risk to independence of the auditors, which is debatable. Uh, such prescribed prohibited practices are uh, not as per the best practices. Now, coming to section 145, which relates to uh, auditors to sign the auditor's report, that explains that the person appointed as an auditor of the company shall sign the auditor's report or sign or certify any other document of the company in accordance with the provisions of this section. Uh, and the qualifications, the observations, comments of financial uh, transactions or, or matters which have, a, which have any adverse effect on the functioning of the company mentioned in the auditor's report shall be read before the company in general meeting and shall be open to inspection by the members of the company. Okay, this is a very good, uh, I mean, development that whatever the auditor's comment that has to be read in the meeting. So, earlier the, it was being only circulated, okay. Now, now it has been uh, definitely uh, emphasized that the report should be read in the meeting. So, any adverse comment by the auditors on the functioning of the company shall be read in the general meeting of the uh, general meeting for information of all the members. This is a good development. Now, coming to section 146, which says that all notices of and other communications relating to any general meeting shall be forwarded to the auditor of the company and the auditor shall, unless otherwise exempted by the company, attend either by himself or through his authorized representative, who shall also be qualified to be an auditor, any general meeting and shall have right to be heard at such meeting on any part of the business which concerns him as the auditor. Okay, if you analyze further on this particular section, then definitely presence of the auditor in general meeting and having the right of being heard in this uh, in same is going to improve the ethical fabric of the company. While transacting business in general meeting, shareholders will be having advantage to listen also auditors comment on the same. Surely it will make the shareholders happy. So I, I, I personally believe that this is a good development and this is going to really improve, uh, you know, the ethical fabric of the company. Now. Uh, Section 147 that, 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 that talks about the punishment of the uh, punishment for contravening uh, the aforesaid uh, sections we, what, we, what we discussed. Now section 147 explains that if any of the provisions of section 139 to 146, okay, if it is, uh, if these sections are, uh, you know, not complied, the company shall be punishable with fine which shall not be less than 25,000 rupees, but which may extend to even 5 lakhs of rupees. And every officer of the company who is in default shall be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to one year or with fine which shall not be less than 10,000 rupees but which may extend to even 1 lakh rupees or with both. Now uh, section 147 further says about the responsibility of the auditor that if an auditor of a company contravenes any of the provisions of section 139 or section 143 or section 144 or 145, the auditor shall be punishable with fine which shall not be less than 25,000 rupees but which may extend to 5 lakh rupees. One interesting uh, difference between the earlier Companies Act 1956 and uh, the new Companies Act 2013, definitely uh, as uh, it is understood or it is experienced that the amount of punishment or the severity, it, ha it, has, it has increased, you know, it has increased. Perhaps this is going to really, uh, I mean, curtail the wrong practices by the, both the company and also uh, the, 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 the auditor. Now, uh, there are certain terms 
which are which are definitely to be properly understood okay the terms like intents to deceive intention to deceive uh, uh, any any other persons concerned or interested in the company so these terms are very much confusing those though, even even the words like improper or misleading statement of particulars uh, even further any likely act so these terms are uh, you know very much confusing similarly some more term, terms are uh, you know uh, a wrongful act or conduct you know that appears very much vague and would create difficulties in interpretations given the unlimited liability inflicted upon the auditor the same may result in adverse impact and may give rise to disputes and conflicts there can be few situations when the firm can be held liable for the fault of partner which is not as per the better international practices the provisions of the class action by the minority shareholders would bring even auditor into purview of into purview besides uh, you know advisors and experts against whom action can be initiated experts believe that this provision might be misused okay now uh, if you look at uh, you know uh, the, the the analysis of this section definitely uh, uh, this section section 147 needs to be properly uh, understood uh, with regard to a lot of a lot of terms which have been used this is really really uh, needs needs to be properly understood okay similarly uh, sometimes even auditor can go uh, against the spirit and may report also certain very small small minor things which is which is again going to create confusion so um, as we understand lot of lot of things are going to further come because of uh, you know the elaboration has not been made in the uh, new activity